Hi everyone, I'm Dan Fullerton and I'd like to talk to you today about vectors which describe motion, specifically the displacement and velocity vectors. So to begin with, our objectives for today are going to be to, to determine the components of a vector along perpendicular axes, to determine the net displacement of a particle, and to determine the change in the displacement or velocity of a particle. So let's start by talking about the position vector. An object's position is its location at a given point in time. The vector from the origin, the 0, 0 or 0, 0, 0 point if you're in three dimensions, to the object's position is known as the position vector. And it's typically written as bold r, r vector, or r with an arrow over it to denote it's a vector. Although sometimes you'll also see it, writ see it written as an s vector. The tail of the position vector starts at the origin, and its head is always at the current position of the object that you're tracking. So if we look at the position vector, here we have two points along the path of an object as functions of time. At some initial point in time, let's call it T1, the position vector would be that. The vector starting at the origin and its head is at the particle's current position. So that's the position vector at time t1. <coughs> Excuse me. A little while later, it has moved over here to another position. We'll call this the position vector at some time t2. Now, when we have these two, we can define the difference between these two from the position vector at time t1 to the position vector at time t2 as displacement. Delta position vector, which is going to be the position vector at time t2 minus the position vector at time t1. Further, if we wanted to write this in terms of unit vector notation, we could write it as the position vector is a function of time is equal to the x component is a function of time times the unit vector in the x direction, i hat, plus the y position is a function of time times j hat, or if you like unit vector notation again, or pardon me, bracket notation, that could be x of t comma y of t. All right, so there's our position vector. And if you look at this then, our average velocity must be equal to change in the position vector is a function of divided by the time interval. So delta r over the time interval gives you the average velocity at any given from any given two points in time. If we go a little bit further though, let's look at how this plays out with the instantaneous velocity and acceleration in two dimensions. The instantaneous velocity is just going to be our average velocity here as delta t approaches zero. So we take the limit as delta t approaches zero and that gives us the first derivative of the position vector with respect to time or the rate of change of the position vector. That's also equal to the derivative of the x component with respect to t in the unit vector x direction plus the derivative of y with respect to t in the unit vector y direction, j hat. Or in bracket notation, derivative of x function, comma, derivative of y function. Similarly, the acceleration is just going to be the derivative of the velocity, or the second derivative of the x function with respect to time, times i hat, the unit vector in the x direction, plus the second derivative of the y component, times the unit vector in the y direction, or j hat or again in bracket notation, second derivative of x with respect to t, comma, second derivative of y with respect to t. So it's the notation here that's difficult. The actual concepts, uh, velocity is the derivative of uh, position, or velocity is the slope of the position time graph, and acceleration is the derivative of velocity, or acceleration is the slope of the velocity time graph. All these things still hold. So. Vector components, something you've probably been doing for quite a while now. Of course, vectors can be expressed as components along mutually perpendicular axes. You can break a vector up into x, y, and z components. Manipulating from one form to another is a pretty important skill in physics as well. So let's just go over this very quickly. If we have some vector 
r, we want to break it up into x and y components, something like this. All we'd have to do to get the x component is take a look, and the component along the x-axis is just going to be rx, which is going to be the magnitude of r times the cosine of angle theta. In this case, that will be our angle theta. Or the y component of r is just going to be r sine theta. And you can go from components back into vectors and angles um, at your will. So let's finish up by talking about vector addition and subtraction. Graphically, to add vectors, all you have to do is line up all the vectors that you have that you want to add tip to tail. Then you draw a line from the starting point of the first vector to the ending point of the last vector. That will give you the vector sum. Analytically, you could just add up all the components separately. Add up all the x components, then add up all the y components, add up all the z components. Subtraction works just like addition. All you need to do is realize that a minus b, if you want to subtract b vector from a vector, just add a to the opposite of b. Works just fine. Graphically, let's go over graphical vector addition fairly quickly. If I have some vector a, and I have another vector b, and I want to add them together, all I'm going to do is move them around in space so that they are lined up tip to tail. There's a again. Now I'll line up b so it's tip to tail. The sum of these two vectors then, I go from the starting point of the first vector to the ending point of the last vector, and now I have vector c, which is equal to a plus b. If I wanted to subtract them, all I do is take b, and instead of leaving that as just b, I would add a to negative b. Hopefully this gets you started with two-dimensional kinematics, velocity, displacement, and some of the notation forms we're going to look at as we get into calculus-based physics. If you need more help or more information, check out aplusphysics.com. Thanks, and make it a great day.